Hello YouTube viewers, welcome everyone. Today I welcome you to my channel Camera Tuesdays. Here we're going to take a look into the fascinating science and technology that goes into our fascinating tools known as cameras. There are many types so we're going to spend some time into our beloved tools. So today's is episode number one. So we're going to take a look into why and how. So what we have to understand is uh, we humans evolved to use our eyes as primary means of navigation. So we rely on our eyes and we have stereoscopic view. Not every animal that has two eyes has stereoscopic. Many of them have panoramic view, but they don't have three dimensional view. We have three dimensional views. So we suffice to say we put a lot of emphasis on visual data. Now, one thing to consider is how our eye work is uh, not like a camera, it more works like a scanner. So you never look at something and be like, okay, I'm going to take a picture of it. No, that's not how you, our eyes work. How our eye work is uh, it keeps scanning it. So if you pay attention to very closely to someone's eyes, always moving somewhere here and there, here and there, here and there. So that's how we create a basically panoramic vision of what we are seeing and our brain fills in the gap while we are not looking somewhere. That's why we don't see our own blind spot. Um, like we have two blind spots and somehow we don't manage to see it in day-to-day -day use. Now uh, this uh, is good and bad. Now good part is that whenever we see someone, someone that we recognize, let's say for a person, uh, we store that information quite uniquely. Now that is good and bad both good it's very space saving basically it's very idiotically compressed so how it's saved is like let's say you see a friend of your own friend so it first the face will be taken up and it will be stored in the categories like there will be a giant barcode sort of scenario would be de developed in your brain where it's like okay this is a male okay male stored you will never store like okay this is his face i'm gonna store it no that's not how it works it's like okay this face will be broken down into components it's like okay he has two eyes and that's why like if you find someone who has like you know one eye he, you may have only seen him once but you will forever remember it because of that check mark and uh, the code is developed and uh, I'm giving a lot of computer analogies uh, to make it easier to understand. So now once you have male, you have height and height is not generated as like, you know, six feet, 6.5 feet, something like that. It's, it's just like ye height, ye height and ye height, basically re relative to you. So you will remember things like that and it saves a lot of space, but it has a consequences that our memories are not permanent. So that is a very heavy price that we pay for this sort of optimized view it's very fast also so like uh, we can perceive the world at 20 frames per second sometimes when our heart rate is high and we are jacked up on adrenaline we can go as high as 60 to 70 frames per second while observing the world in real time and as in like we can even process move our muscles and all that so we do get a high frame rate per se three-dimensional but uh, we do suffer severe uh, penalties specifically in long-term memory now when it comes to memory this is the biggest difference between an eye and a camera eye has no way of recording the memory that it saw like you will not remember what color uh, your classroom was like try to remember that like what is the color of your classroom wall like somebody can hint you something and you will overwrite the original data because that data was stored uh, in chunks in, it was not stored like this is a whole image you know the whole aspect of it so this is why we value photographs so much like photograph shows you a whole thing a photo shows you a whole picture of an event in past that is recorded to its complete extent like if you take a photo like let's say for example right now if I show you this video, you will forever remember like what was the color of the background, what is my color of t-shirt. Now let's say you look at 10 years fast, somebody could have told you, oh, remember that guy that used to wear this black t-shirt or something like that. You literally replace this data with uh, data from your uh, other aspects of your brain. So that's why we don't have very good uh, long-term memory and that's why you can't just see a phone book and be like, okay, I saw a phone book, I remember everything. No, you can't because you have to store that data and you have to extract it manipulate it then store it so but a camera it doesn't care what it what is looking at this is the core difference between human eye and a camera camera is absolute it takes a whole moment in time and stores it permanently 
I, when I mean permanently as in like the data is at that moment uncorrupted. I mean like uh, what, what camera saw is exactly what happened. So this is why we value photographs so much like uh, it's uh, we know like intentionally we know like when you see old photos of yourself and you're like okay I didn't knew I looked like even though you must have seen yourself in mirror thousands of times but our brain compartmentalizes that information and decodes it while decoding it saves a lot of space but resolution of your inf memory goes down dramatically so all things considered we have to understand this human eye while is very epic in terms of frame rate in terms of resolution in terms of dynamic range although modern digital camera is surpassing us but uh, all things here we have very good eyes the problem lies in the memory aspect like uh, you cannot recall what was like you know you were doing in five years ago even though you were there like you were actually there but you don't recall it is the memory aspect is the problem so camera allows us a uh, very good uh, way to bypass this sort of issues so that's why cameras are so important to us it doesn't matter whether it's a dslr whether it's a phone camera camera captures a moment in time to its full extent like of course the extent is limited to the quality of the camera like if you have a lousy camera you will get lousy image but even then you will get absolute time like this is an event that happened in past and that is priceless that is literally capturing time. It's a practical time machine. Like you can uh, look at your old uh, school book photos and albums and all that and you'll be like, you'll be transported back in there. Like because your brain, even though it had the information, it had, you know, just eroded the small, small details. And because the information was, you know, stored in those small, small details, at the end you have just a blobs. Like if there was a school, I don't know what the color was. I think like certain aspects will re you remember like how tall the building was. Like if it was really, really tall school building, you will remember that forever. But you get the idea. It's like details erode away and details are the picture. So this uh, that concludes why we value photographs so much. Now we're going to look into how. Now you have to understand this. All the cameras that uh, we see works on photons now this is where things get interesting what are photons basically photons are the energy carrier of the smallest scale possible unless we find graviton so far we haven't so photons remains the smallest energy carrier we have it's even the smallest particle unless you go into subatomic particles inside a subatomic particle so photons remains there and it's massless so that's why it's travel at such a high speed which is light speed so what do we have to understand about uh, photons is that a is massless that means it will always travel at light speed it never has acceleration and deceleration it always travels at light speed that's why uh, you have a sound lag but you never have a visual lag now of course if distance is very long enough as in in light years or in case of our sun which is eight light minutes away or in case of moon which is one point roughly 1.2 seconds to 1.8 seconds away i i hear, can keep hearing conflicting data on that so there is a lag only at extreme distance like uh, if you are talking on earth from uh, from one point to another point where you can see there will be almost no lag so the fact that it's massless allows it to travel at extremely high speed the extreme high speed that photon has allows us to observe the world in real time like if you starting using sonar you have to wait you have to wait for uh, the sound to bounce back and it could take time it could take precious time now ma being massless also benefits as well that it's undetectable what it means is basically you can hear sound from anywhere heck you can hear sound in space if you just touch something like if something else is like uh, making a knocking sound on that object you can still hear it but eyes are very very directional you can only see things that you have to see or where you are pointing at like i am pointing at this camera right now so i can see it but i can have no idea what's happening behind me however audio is omnidirectional now this gives light a unique advantage where you can focus it. So this is why uh, we keep hearing the word focus so many times in our day to day life. You're like, you know, you're not studying well, focus. If you are having trouble, focus. Focus matters like, so we have something that travels ludicrously fast and something that is focusable. Like, as in, you can narrow its field of view. 
and it won't be like you know you're getting omnidirectional information so this allows very unique advantages now one of the interesting aspects of photons is that it acts like a wave and in the context that we are discussing right now consider it acts like a wave and just remember it uh, it can travel through no medium basically if there is no air it can still travel if it's vacuum it can still travel so all things considered the wave plays a very crucial role in day-to-day uh, -day life of photons basically now you must have seen this giant photon graph basically photons have wavelength so wavelength can be small to wide and uh, based on that it has intensity it's almost like a sound so on that in intensity comes the resolution so let's say you elongate the wave like a microwave we use it for uh, radars and mobile communication but if you use a radar have you if you have ever seen radars anywhere you will see they have they don't have very high resolution because the wavelength is so far apart now it's, it's good enough for astronomy you can use it to observe celestial body you can observe planets and all that but if you're trying to observe a human far enough may flat out what because the wavelengths are not short enough however then you might say okay let's use the tightest wavelength we can that ends up in territory above ultraviolet which is x-ray and then gamma rays x-rays are dangerous to humans and gamma rays will flat out destroy you now we use x-ray but you must have seen the people who are using x-rays uh, wearing a lead shield and standing behind a protective wall like is in small doses it's not that big of a deal but in large doses it is so this gives us the very interesting understanding of the wavelength so smaller it is the higher resolution it is but also high energy so that means we can't just you know keep getting a smaller wavelength and very interesting use of it is in our optical data storage and that's why you have red dvd blu-ray that's why you get it and the reason why blue is so dense is because so far off so all things considered you have to understand the photon has a wavelength wavelength defines its ability its properties how high resolution it will be and uh, how can you use it so all things considered uh, we move on to the aspect of this wavelength is that we observe very narrow bandwidth of this like not bandwidth i would, would be a correct word very narrow band of it from one point to another point and it's not very wide and uh, you might have heard like some animals can see in ultraviolet some insects specifically and some animals can see in infrared that is true however the width of that band that any creature can see is not very wide it's very narrow so if you have an animal that sees like you know uh, that sees into infrared is generally shifted from blue so it will not have high resolution of, for blue and same vice versa if somebody sees ultraviolet but it will have hard time understanding red so like some creatures do have bit wider but all in all you more or less your width of that uh, system is locked because of our biology and how fluid works and all things considering like that so when considering that uh, we have a very limited width of this entire spectrum that we can see which we call a visual light uh, there are certain equipments that we can use that that's why i said the cameras are very very unique tools that has much wider range or can, can be focused into something like uh, let's say for instance you can focus it on radio wave and that's how we get radio telescope or you can focus it on infrared and that's how we get thermal camera funny part about thermal cameras the reason why they are expensive is not to do with their electronics is to do with their lenses they don't have normal glass lenses glass blocks infrared now biggest problem with that is if you block if your glass is blocking it you cannot use it as a lens so what they use is a metal lens specifically they use gallium lenses to allow basically it's a metal mirror that is used to focus infrared and it will be opaque to visual light so that's one of the core reason why uh, infrared cameras are so expensive and the fact that it also requires cooling which makes it very complicated to design especially if a uh, battery operated it's a battery operated so so now you saw like we can have radio wave we can have x-rays we can have basically we even have a gamma rays detector but it's not very high resolution because uh, detectors it simply goes through the detector so it's very hard to take energy off of gamma rays to study it so 
it's quite complicated and we'll get into that uh, in next episodes where uh, we'll discuss specifically high radiation imaging basically x-rays and gamma rays and you can you most of us know about infrared cameras and it has become quite popular recently because of uh, uh, small add-ons that you can buy for your mobile phones it's very low resolution but it gets the job done so however there are certain uh, cameras that have the advantage of having a wider bandwidth uh, absorption ability basically they can see either multiple slices of the image or or a thicker slice where thicker slice ones are called hyperspectral camera and then when you have multiple slices we call it multi multispectral camera and there is a movie even movie on that so that's going to be quite interesting to see so these are quite a uh, fancy examples of the camera that we used in day-to-day -day life however you might say what are the most common that you and i gonna buy or you know you want to make a decision about that there will be generally only two types interchangeable lens camera and non-interchangeable lens camera there is everything else is uh, minute compared to that big information lenses as i said that photons allows you to focus something focusing means uh, you are limiting your range so range gives you a unique advantage like uh, you need telephoto lens to narrow your range so tight that you can from uh, outside of a cricket field can focus into the cricketer which is like very small like look from human eye it's like very small but somehow that because you are focusing so tightly on that you're not zooming in there is no zooming in you don't go to closer to that all you are doing is filling up the sensor with that small area that's why you're focusing tight and you get it in millimeters like um, 300 millimeters 600 millimeter interchangeable lens camera allows us to buy a lens that suits our need that's the biggest advantage of it it doesn't matter whether it's in mirrorless or it's a mirrored camera as long as you have good lens and the fact that you can choose a lens which you need it serves the function but like let's say you buy a camera that is very good it gets the job done sensor technology and all that is very good however the lens does not suit your need it's useless so those are the two primary aspects of our day-to-day uh, -day camera life so that would be all you can tune in next tuesday to deal uh, learn more about cameras and uh, next episode i hope you like this presentation please leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed it and uh, subscribe if you are free so thank you for uh, listening and as always i hope you had a pleasant day